Back to the ADSB Go Box project, we have the box. And inside we have the Raspberry Pi Zero in the Geek Worm case that gives us the three USB ports. We've got the two ADSB Exchange dongles, one for 1090 and one for A cars or 978 if you're in the US. But today we're going to focus on this magical battery pack. These things are actually pretty hard to find. I mean, they're they're plentiful, yes, but it's hard to find one that does the thing that you want. I picked a 20,000 milliamp hour battery and we will see if it does the thing. Remember when we were younger and we were out for a battery pack and it was Energizer or Duracell or something. And now there's like 600 different brand names. None of them you've heard before. And it's all just a gamble. This is actually fairly, fairly dense. It didn't seem heavy when it was in the packaging, but now that it's out of the packaging, it is heavier. This is going to be one of the few times I do not install a lanyard on something. Kind of a weird design anyway. Ah, oh, it's not a lanyard. Ooh, they tricked you. It's a USB-C to USB-C charging cable that just happens to look like a lanyard. Okay, so I guess I am installing that. But I don't really need the bag. Nice bag though. We'll use that for some other project. And I don't know why I have a sim ejection tool maybe to shove the lanyard in no, i'm still not going to install the lanyard i'm still not going to do it okay so one of the cool things about this is well it's not cool that it's got micro in but it's got micro in micro in matches the power that goes into the raspberry pi so i already have the adapter for that USB-C lightning in that's weird that those are imports and then output one, output two, output three, and looks like it is USB two, USB two, and then QC. So we shall see if it's QC. Supports lightning type C micro USB input. You could recharge power bank through any of those. Charge four devices simultaneously. And it's the diagram is too small to tell anything. USB, the orange one is a QC 3.0 port. So that's gonna put out the highest amount of power. USB-C is input and output. And then it says lightning is input and micro is input. The QC 3.0 is four and a half to five amps output, five volts, 4.5 amps output. So that's gonna be plenty to power the Raspberry Pi and the dongles. USB-C itself is QC PD 3.0. So five volts, three amps, nine volts, 2.2 amps and 12 volts, 1.5 amps. We could even run a little uh, QRP radio off of that if we had the right power adapters. And then this will run up to 60 degrees Celsius, which is pretty hot, which is good. First thing we need to do is charge it up. I would never have thought that that was a charging cable and not a lanyard. I don't know if that's genius or if it's just straight up trickery. So from my USB bench power supply, which is PD, we're gonna charge this thing up. So it says 80 and it's blinking with a zero. So it's probably at 80% charge. Before we do that, let's see if it will power the phone over USB-C. Yep, so it's charging the phone. Okay, so it does the thing that I needed to do. We need to get this thing charged up to 100% for a capacity test and then we will be back when it's ready. Hams love data, and so we need to figure out just how long this battery will last. I don't know that there's really any reason to know, but I want it to last for, I don't know, five to six hours. I want it to be able to be set up when people are walking by and, and be relatively reliable to run for most of the time that they walk by. So I need to know. And Linux has tons and tons of utilities that tell you what's going on. So there is this utility called Uptime which tells you how long the machine's been up. In this case, it tells me the current time in UTC, 1842.33. And then it tells me that the machine has been up for an hour and 55 minutes, which is true. And then a bunch of other useful information if that's the kind of thing that you're into. But right now we wanna know the uptime and we wanna figure out a way to write this out to disk. And then we're gonna crash the computer and see what happens by running the battery all the way down to zero. So what can we do? There's another command in here called watch and watch will look at things and run them over and over again. So if we watch uptime, by default, it'll run, like it says in the upper corner there, every two seconds, it'll run the command uptime. And you can see the seconds ticking away in the first parameter there. So 1843, 16, 18, 20. So every two seconds, it runs this command over and over again. And it will tell us the amount of time that the system's been up on the screen. But Number one, I don't have a screen installed. And number two, when the thing crashes, the screen's gonna go with it when the thing runs out of power. I'm just saying crash. We gotta get this onto disk so that it will survive the machine losing power. So under normal circumstances, you can do uptime greater than uptime.log, which will write it out to the disk. 
it's redirecting the output that would go to the screen to the file that you specify on the command line. I put one greater than symbol there, so it's going to overwrite the file every time. I could put two greater than symbols there. It could, but it's not going to. It could fill up the disk with a solid wall of uptime statistics for every two seconds for the last 200 years or whatever until it runs out of 64 gigs worth of disk space. It's not likely, but it's also ugly and wasteful, and we don't want to do that. So that's if we wanted to do that, we would use two greater than symbols. So uptime greater than greater than uptime dot spelling it right uptime dot log. So now if we take a look at this file, there should be two lines in there for uptime dot log. See, there's two lines in there. If I go back to just the first one, there's only one line because it overwrote the file with the new contents instead of appending to the end of the file with the new contents. So those are two very useful commands. We've got watch, we've got uptime, and we've got uptime redirecting to standard output. However, if you link all these together, I think it's not going to work. I think that watch is going to redirect its output to, it's, I think it's going to make a mess. Let's see. Yeah, so there's no on-screen output, which we don't technically need, but let's see what the uptime log looks like. It looks empty. So there's a problem there. So there's another Linux command called T. And we're going to do uptime pipe to t. So all the output from uptime is going to go to the t command. And t is going to shove it to the screen and shove it to the file that we specify on disk. It's like a t fitting in your plumbing supply. And so now I see it on the screen. And remember from the last time when we did the cat uptime.log, we got no output because there was nothing written. This time we should get some output in the uptime.log file. And we do. So it's working out great. And it's the same line that was on the screen. So now let's link all of this together. Watch uptime pipe to t uptime.log and see if that does the thing. And we'll let it go. There's 10 seconds. There's 12 seconds. OK, control C to break out of that cat uptime.log. And it is 12 seconds. It also redirected the entire output of the watch command, which is a screen full of data, which is fine because I want some I want some data on disk, but I don't want to fill my disk up. And here we go. This is this has done the thing. Let's take a look at the file size. And it is 258 bytes, so it's a mostly empty screen worth of data. All right, perfect. So there we go. Now we have the command that we need in order to record to log the time at least two seconds before the machine runs out of power. And then I'll be able to boot it back up again on shore power and investigate the file. So I'm going to recable this whole thing. I'm going to log in and start the command off. I'm going to have all of the SDR dongles plugged in so that it's using the most amount of power. And then I'll come back and report what the results are, how long this thing lasts. And it should give me up, you know, six hours or up 12 hours or whatever the actual number is. And then we'll know the number. And we're back. So I have successfully ran this thing all the way down to zero battery. And as a result of running it down to zero battery, it crashed. You know, the, the operating system disappeared out from underneath of all the running processes because the hardware disappeared out from underneath of the operating system. I took the SD card out and I put it in my other Linux machine. And this is looking at the other Linux machine. And this is the boot partition. There's not going to be anything useful on there. And then I have this error. And it says you can't mount it read only. Okay, well, I don't. I don't particularly care. Let's go. Oh, I think I know what this is. This is me being stupid, I think. Let's pull the disk out of the drive. And there's a write protect flag. Right there. Let's see if that was it. Hey, sometimes it's the little things. I need to go into the home folder on the SD card, not the home folder on the Linux host machine. And in there, there should be a pi folder. And in the pi folder, there should be my uptime.log. Let's view this file. And that's a bunch of escape codes for terminal character control. Let's open it up in an editor. That's still not very readable. Why is it being a pain in the butt about readability? All right, we'll go to our old friend terminal. Let's maximize this so everybody can play along at home and see it. 
Hey, there we go. Up 15, 20. Seems about right. That's 15 hours and 20 minutes of uptime. So this is the uptime of my local machine one day. And then this is the uptime of the ADSB Go Box. 15 hours, 20 minutes. So that battery lasted us 15 hours and 20 minutes. That's fantastic. There is yet another way to test this thing out. This is a USB digital tester. And I pushed a button when I shouldn't have. And it gives me a ton of information on the screen that I can't read, but I will read it back to you guys. So we have USB power coming in and we have USB power going out and we are going to power up this device. We'll give it a minute to settle out. Okay, now we're in extreme zoom mode and you can see four point something watts. It kind of changes a little bit depending on how it feels. And then 0.23 watt hours, 48 milliamp hours, and 1.0 one point something amps drawn. So it depends on how it's feeling. It'll it'll fluctuate between this green number up here. Eh, where is it? This green number right up here is fluctuating somewhere around one amp. Data nerds, am I right? Data nerds. So we need to figure out how long this will power this. And I gave you two different ways of doing it, but I'm not quite finished with the second way. The second way is this thing here. It shows about one point something amps consumed current draw, you know, real time stats, one point something. And the battery is 20,000 milliamp hours. So you take 20,000 milliamp hours and you divide that by, we'll, we'll just call it 1.2 to round up a little bit for you know some kind of safety sake, some kind of buffer sake. And it says about 16 hours using this device, which lines up with our about 15 plus hours using the old fashioned command line method. So now we know that this thing will last longer than I need it to last because I'm not getting up. I'm not running this thing for 24 hours on battery power. I'm going to run it during the day. I'm going to gain some attention, some, oh, hey, what's that thing? And then I'm going to get to talk to everybody about how cool radio waves are and maybe sell the hobby a little bit more. I don't know. I'm just, uh, I'm playing along as we go along and seeing where we get with this thing. If you want more runtime, get more milliamp hours in your battery pack. If you don't care, get less runtime in your battery pack. Where do we go from here? So we got to get this thing mounted in the case and maybe a GPS reference, and maybe a solar charge controller, and maybe, 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 who knows? But stay tuned because I'm gonna keep playing with this thing and having a lot of fun with it. Wanted to bring you along for the journey. So as usual, there will be links in the description down below where you can find this USB power dingus, or the battery pack, or all the other stuff that we are working on in this project. There's a video right here I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll be over there waiting for you.